Now, as he moves along, he says, you're too religious. He says, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. Now, there are two ways in which that unknown God can be taken. He says, I beheld your devotions, actually the objects of your worship. I beheld your altars, your idols, and your temples. In fact, that beautiful, lovely temple, the Parthenon, was a temple built to Athena, a virgin goddess, so-called, of the Athenians. And there were idols all around. And Paul says, I beheld all of this, and then amidst all the idols, I found an altar, and it was to the unknown God. Now, that could mean that the Athenians were broad-minded, and they didn't want to leave anybody out. And if somebody came to Athens and said, how is it you don't have an altar to my God? And they could say, well, this one is really to it. We are broad-minded here. We didn't want to miss anybody. So this is to the unknown God. It'll be to yours. You can worship at that altar. Or it could mean this, that they recognized that there was a God that they did not know. Many pagan folk recognize that back of their idolatry there was the living and true God, but they couldn't get to him and they knew nothing about him. That way back in the dim and distant past, their ancestors somehow or another did worship him, but they did not, and therefore they go to these idols. They could have meant that to the unknown God. Now Paul says, this is my springboard here. I want to talk to you about the unknown God the one you don't know. And that was not as diplomatic as his first approach was because the Athenians thought they knew everything. They were philosophers. The Athenians, they just talk back and forth. They are like a lot of college campuses today. That would have been certainly a typical place. And now will you notice, Paul begins to talk about the God they do not know. Who is he? Well, first of all, Paul says he's the creator, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now, he makes something very clear that all the way through the Old Testament, it's clear. Even when God gave to Israel the tabernacle and the temple, he made it clear he didn't dwell there. Solomon at the dedication of the temple. He says, The heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, and how can this house that we built? They recognized in the Old Testament that God, the Creator, the living God, couldn't live in a building that man had made. Man lives in a universe that God has made. And they thought that they could build a temple and God could move in. 